welcome to all of you to yet another video where we will be discussing about the development of three particular microstructures the first one to start off with coarse perlite then fine perlite then bannet microstructure i will show you how to produce this kind of a microstructure in your alarm in the last lecture we have seen how time temperature transformation diagrams were produced and what is the relevance of those diagrams and what uh, inferences that we can arrive at from those diagrams now let's uh, let's do a small recap as you can see here obviously when i bring the temperature to say let's say 500 degrees centigrade then at around 10 seconds the transformation will begin and it will be over let's say by 100 seconds but that's not the case when you have a case in which you are bringing the eutectoid composition eutectoid alloy to a temperature of 650 degrees centigrade and allowing the transformation to happen then it's let's say it takes 100 seconds to begin the reaction it's contrary to the 10 seconds when you bring the temperature to around 500 degrees centigrade and it takes around let's say a lot of time it takes a lot of time because the time it requires for the completion of the re reaction is somewhere around 10 to the power 4 so it takes a lot of time for the reaction to be over so these were the few inferences that we we can deduce out of this particular diagram the other important thing is that when we do an isothermal transformation at temperature near to the eutectoid temperature let's say 600 degrees centigrade 650 degrees centigrade and all then we will end up with a coarse perlite structure similarly i will explain you what is coarse perlite and fine perlite as well i have explained you uh, in other part of the course as well but i will explain you again what is coarse perlite so we will end up with a coarse perlite microstructure and we will end up with a fine perlite microstructure if we are performing the isothermal reaction at temperature around 540 degrees centigrade clear now let me tell you why we are ending up with different microstructures different perlite microstructures as when we are changing the temperature of the reaction so here is the coarse perlite microstructure and here is the fine perlite microstructure as you can see here the fv3 layers are very thick in nature in coarse perlite compared to fine perlite see i told you a coarse perlite microstructure will be there when you perform the isothermal transformation at temperatures near to eutectoid temperature because at those high temperatures like 600 degrees centigrade and 650 degrees centigrade diffusion rates are very high so carbon can actually diffuse like this is how i can show you here i can zoom it over here like this is how see this is how the diffusion occurs this is the gamma oscillate and uh, the reaction is progressing in that particular uh, in the direction so what happens is iron sorry carbon atoms will diffuse into the into the cementite region as you can show and see here this is the cementite region and this is the alpha ferrite region so carbon is diffusing towards the carbon rich area or the region where carbon content should be high though so that's how the perlite microstructure is formed this diffusion process is governed by temperature so when you perform isothermal transformation at temperatures near to the eutectoid temperature that is like 650 700 degrees celsius then the diffusion rates will be high so actually carbon atoms can relatively diffuse into long distances and result in thick layers of thick fur uh, thick cementite layers as shown here 
but when you perform the same reaction the same isothermal transformation reaction at temperatures around 540 degrees celsius then diffusion rates as they are directly linked to the temperature are much lower then carbon atoms cannot diffuse into very long distances so the resulting microstructure will have thin dark layers of cementite as shown here in fine perlite so we will end up with a fine perlite microstructure when we perform the reaction at temperatures around 540 degrees celsius so that explains you why different types of perlite microstructures can be produced and at what temperatures they will be formed so let's get started talking about another microstructure which will be produced from the iron carbon alloy of eutectoid composition this particular microstructure is called bainite this contains again both ferrite and cementate phase that means here also diffusion should be there you can ask me this question when there is ferrite and cementate present in a system why you always uh, demand the process of diffusion the answer is simple the austenite phase is having a carbon content of 0.76 and when you have this ferrite and alpha phase sorry ferrite and cemented phases their carbon content is totally different so that's why the redistribution of carbon is necessary for the formation of these two phases so the redistribution will happen or it will occur by the process of diffusion that's why i keep saying that diffusion is necessary when the microstructure contains both ferrite and cemented phase so what i have shown here is a single grain of bainite the grain uh, grows in this particular diagonal direction now you can see that cementate is occurring in the form of needles or plates in a ferrite matrix so this is the kind of microstructure um, we uh, um, this is the kind of micro bainite this is what we will usually see in a bainite microstructure now can you tell me now the next question have um, naturally arises now you have explained me a microstructure then when it will be formed where it will be formed how to uh, how i should control my temperature and time so that at towards the end i will arrive at bainite microstructure so for answering that particular question we have to go we have to look at the time temperature transformation diagram so here is the ttt diagram so on the x axis your time i always say always keep in mind that the it is a logarithmic scale so you can see the time is not like one two three it's like one ten ten square ten cube ten to the power ten to the power five moreover on the y axis you have temperature now the important thing is that this is called the nose of the ttt diagram about this particular nose this will happen around a tem at an around temperature of let's say 540 degrees celsius this is not like fixed and all it's a thumb uh, it's, it's, it's an, in the vicinity of that particular temperature this nose will happen what it shows actually this tells you that about this particular temperature when you do an isothermal transformation the resulting microstructure is perlite but below this particular temperature when you do an isothermal cooling the resulting microstructure is bainite does that make sense so at a temperature uh, I, if you ask me a range of temperature then i would say bef between 215 degree centigrade somewhere here to 540 degree centigrade perlite is a sorry bainite is a transformation product and from 540 degrees centigrade to 727 degrees centigrade perlite is a transformation product perlite can be either coarse or perlite as we had discussed in the previous lecture so does that make sense now let me go ahead and show you two cooling curves and tell you what the resulting microstructure so let's say this is one cooling curve 
and let me use a different cooling curve for uh, the let me use a different color let's say okay these are the two cooling curves so this is the first cooling curve I'm bringing the temperature to somewhere around 600 and then I'm holding it at uh, holding the temperature constant then allowing the austenite to transform completely then I'm resulting with the, the alloy will be having a perlite microstructure but at the same time if this kind of a cooling curve is followed let's say I'm bringing the temperature rapidly uh, the slope should have been much higher but for the timing let's say I'm, this is pretty rapid let's say less than five seconds I'm bringing it down to a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius and then I'm holding it at that particular temperature then the resulting microstructure is bennett so the whole idea is now I let's say if I know the cooling tem time temperature plot I can predict the phase I hope these two uh, this particular example this particular example of two cooling curves and using TTD diagram I'm predicting the resulting microstructure I told you well in the beginning that this is the advantage of developing TTT diagrams you can predict the microstructure so now you can go ahead and tweak your process let like say let it be a heat treatment process then you can tweak the process accordingly so that you will end up with the required microstructure at the end of the process